This week, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the way that we can structurally look at text. And we'll be doing more of this throughout the weeks. Yitro is the story of Moshe's father-in-law coming to visit Moshe and the children of Israel and leaving them with a legal system. Uh, the entire uh, story of Yitro coming to visit uh, B'nai Israel is about 24, uh, I'm sorry, 27 uh, verses and uh, I've reproduced all of them in front of us here. Now, one of the things that we look for when we try and evaluate the structure of a text is we look for key words, repeated words, and these words are often repeated in series of seven. Now, in our text, we will find that the words Yitro, Chotein Moshe, Yitro, Moshe's father-in-law, uh, exhibit such a structure. So we can see them right up front, Vaishma Yitro, Kohen Midian Choten Moshe, so here he's identified also as the priest of Midian. Um, and you'll find that this phrase repeats over and over and over again. Yitro is no longer referred to only by his name, but constantly as Vaikach Yitro Choten Moshe, uh, then again, not too far along later, Vayavo Yitro Choten Moshe, and then a fourth time, Vayomer Moshe Ani Choten Cha Yitro. Um, so we have this constant repetition uh, that uh, Yitro is Chotein Moshe, that he's Moshe's uh, father-in-law, over and over and over again. And, and in fact, at a certain point, we even lose that his name is Yitro. So you'll notice that uh, we used three lines uh, to show uh, whenever the text says Yitro Chotein Moshe, Yitro, and that he was the father-in-law and of Moshe. But in our, uh, in our fifth repetition, we lose Yitro. It's Vayetze Moshe Likrat Chotno. Moshe goes out to his father-in-law. So we've lost the word Yitro. And that holds true again for number six. And then finally in number seven, we lose even that, and we only have Yitro. We have only a single line there. Vayichad Yitro. And this is actually the conclusion of sort of the first series of mentions. Uh, of Yitro. And the story is that Yitro hears about all the things that God did uh, to save Moshe and to save the Jewish people from Egypt, and he decides to come visit. And in fact, Moshe hears about it and comes out to greet his father-in-law, and Yitro's got with him all of Moshe's kids as well as his wife. And when Yitro hears from Moshe, Moshe tells him the story of what happened in Egypt, uh, I guess in more detail than he had already known. It says, Vayechad Yitro al kol hatova, asher asa Hashem Yisrael, asher hitzilo miyad Mitzrayim, and we're right now in, in the ninth verse. And this word Vayechad, what, what, what did Yitro do exactly, is, is uh, the question or the subject of some speculation. Was he happy or was he upset? Vayechad, what, what, where does that word come from? And it's really at the crux because it's it's where we get really twice this repetition of it's just Yitro. And after this Vayichad, whatever that verb means, whatever Yitro did, Vayomer Yitro, Yitro says, Baruch Hashem asher hitzilatchem biyad Mitzrayim miyad paro, asher hitzilatam mitachat yad Mitzrayim. Blessed is God. Yitro blesses God for rescuing him from Egypt and from Paro. Um, and the story then goes on to uh, give us another series of seven repetitions of Yitro as the father-in-law of Moshe, as Yitro goes into developing a legal system. Um, but even right up to here, uh, we can see an interesting thing. We can see, um, we already hear an echo here, a parallel back to uh, a story in Bereshit, which was the story of Avraham after he defeats uh, the four kings returns to Malkitzedek, Malkitzedek, Melech Shalem, Malkitzedek, the king of Shalem, who is also represented as a Kohen Le'el Elyon, a, a priest to God. So here too we have, uh, after a battle, after a conflict of a confrontation, uh, we have a priest uh, who appears into the story and who, just like Malkitzedek did, blesses God and produces sacrifices. Uh, so already the story calls us back to that moment. There, there are even more Genesis references in this story, but let's go forward some more. Let's just take a quick look. We see after um, 
After the text has shrunk Yitro down to only his name, it now expands out again, Yitro Chotein Moshe, and um, then it proceeds to call him Chotein Moshe a number of other times, and finally we see that we have 14 total references, and I'm grouping the two mentions of Yitro into one here, uh, and the crux, the center uh, of these 14 are references 7 and 8, the Yitro doing this Vayichad, which we didn't decide what it was yet, and Vayomer Yitro, uh, Baruch Hashem, Yitro blessing God, and then the eighth is Vaykach Yitro Chotein Moshe Ulaz Vachim Lelohim, right? That the next part of it is he brings sacrifices. So the crux of the meeting with Yitro is Yitro doing this Vayichad and then blessing. And blessing and then bringing sacrifices. And in fact, the Medrash tells us that what Yitro does here is he converts. There's a few ways of approaching it, um, but Vayichad, uh, one expression is that he passes a cherev chadai, sharp sword across his flesh, that is, he gives himself circumcision. Another Medrash says, don't read Vayichad, but Vayihad. Don't read it, uh, read it as Vayihad, he became Yehudi, he became Jewish, which is naturally anachronistic. The Jews were not referred to as Yehudim until much, 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 much later. Um, but Kabbalistically, uh, there are sources that say Vayichad was that he was Meyached, he unified, he united his name with God's. In other words, he became part of uh, the Jewish people, he attached himself to this nation, and a number of other similar approaches that what Yitro does is he binds himself to the Jewish people, and, and that seems pretty natural, right? He seems so pleased, he blesses God, and he brings sacrifices to God. Okay, so in a sense, the text is telling us that Yitro, uh, like Malkit Tzedek in many ways, is now, even though he's related here as Kohen Midian, has evolved, he is now some kind of um, Kohen to God. He brings sacrifices to God. And then he proceeds to also become a lawgiver of sorts, right? Because what he does is he observes Moshe uh, as a judge, and he tells Moshe that this is not a good idea, that he can't judge the people, he's not going to last if he tries to take on this heavy burden on his own, and that he really needs to um, get help, that he really needs other people to help him. And here's where we have another interesting parallel back to Bereshit. Take a look at these phrases. So first we have, um, this This is the first one in, in Pasuk Dalad is about Moshe's son. So Yitro brought Moshe's two sons with him to reunite him with his wife and with his two sons. And we get the first mention of his second son's name, V'shem Ha'echad Eliezer. One of them's name is Eliezer. Ki Elohe Avi Be'ezri, because my father's God was there to help me. Vayatsileni Micherev Paro, and he saved me from the sword of Paro. It's an odd thing. The kid's been named already quite some time ago. Uh, and uh, so why why are we hearing about his name and the reason for it here? Um, it's also weird because you wouldn't expect Moshe to use the phrase ki Elohei avi be'ezri. Uh, if Moshe has a, a father, if we think about Moshe's fathers, we don't really think about his Jewish father, Amram. We, we tend to think about Paro as his father in some ways, and also Yitro, even as his father in some ways. His father-in-law, the one in whose house he grew up, you know, he, he lived for many years, um, the one who really took him under his wing. So that's an interesting one. And, and, and the word Be'ezri, when we then look further down, and we see that Yitro says to Moshe, Vayomer Chotein Moshe Elav, after reviewing what Moshe was doing as a judge, he says, Lo tov hadavar, it's not good, right, this thing is not good, and he goes on to say, Lo tuchal asehu, asohu levadecha, you will not be able to do it alone. So put those words together, where have we were, heard those words before? This notion of ezer and lo tov and, leva, and levad. Well, they go all the way back to the creation of Chava, to the creation of Eve. God looks down on Adam, and he says, Lo tov heyot ha'adam levado, it's no good for Adam to be on his own. E'eselo ezer kenegdo. Right, I'll make a help, a help for him, or corresponding to him. 
And it seems that that's what Yitro is saying as well, and that's what this text is coming to remind us of. This, this question of who is Yitro is Yitro is, in a sense, Moshe's Ezer Kenegdo. He's not his wife, he's his wife's father, right? And that's why the reference in Pasuk Dalid is there. That's why the reference to Eliezer and Ki Elohei Avi Be'ezri, right? Because the God that Yitro brings sacrifices to and the God that he accepts is the God who lived on Har Sinai. It was a God who lived in Midian. He was, in a sense, Yitro's God. He was the God that Yitro had always been looking for all his life. And now Yitro appears and serves as an Ezer. He serves as an aide to Moshe and tells Moshe, you can't do it alone. And the advice that he gives to Moshe is depend on other people. Find other people that you can teach, that you can uh, rely on to help you judge all these people because you can't do it alone. And that's all Yitro's task is. Although it appears at first that Yitro may be here as a usurper of sorts. He shows up, he's a priest, he starts making declarations, he's doing Yichud of his name and God's name, he's bringing sacrifices, he's now resetting the legal system. But at the end of the day, Moshe knows. Moshe knows that all he needs to do, and this is in Pasuk Chafdal 24, Vaishma Moshe lekol chotno. He listens to Yitro's voice, and this also reminds us a little bit of Avram listening to Sarah's voice. And after listening to Sarah's voice, what does he do? He puts in, he, you know, he, he doesn't listen to Sarah's voice, he listens to Yitro's voice, but what does he do? He establishes the justice system as Yitro recommends. And then, Vayishlach Moshe et Chotno, Vayelech Leolartso, Vayishalach Moshe et Chotno. Moshe sends Yitro away, back to his land. Which also reminds us a little bit of Avraham sending Yishmael. Well, I'll tell you, there are many, many, many more parallels here to stories in Bereshit, and it's well worth looking at in greater depth. But the lessons for us today are, first of all, to pay attention to structure and to look for keywords and to look for multiples of seven and to look at the middle of those structures to find what the key to the story is. And the lesson for us as people is to remember that God didn't create us to do it on our own, that God created us to need help, whether it's needing help from a son or needing help from a father or a father-in-law or, of course, the original help meet needing help from a wife and also needing help from all the people that we work with every day. So I ask you all, go out, depend on the people in your lives, trust them, work with them. We're not here to do this all on our own. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you'll join us again next week.